James, good to see you in the flesh again. How is it uh, going at the conference? Pretty good, Rodney. Early days, but um, it's good to see. I think a lot of people are expecting uh, different moods given market changes, but everyone's upbeat, and I think that's it augurs pretty well that uh, people are still there and, and um, the long-term future looks pretty good. As I said on the uh, panel, when I have to put a tie on, then you know we're in deep in the bear market <laughs> territory. So, um, James, if we can just talk a little about North American lithium. There's been a lot going on there. Um, certainly, it looks like uh, you've had a, a good run of it in fair weather and ramping up the project. Sure. Uh, yeah, Rodney, it'll be good, I think, particularly when we come up to our quarterly results. And uh, we want to give a holistic uh, view of what we've done in production cost-wise. And moving to the ramp up, obviously you've been monitoring a lot of them previously and I've been involved with a few. And, and this has been, all of them are challenging, but we've had different challenges across the board. And I think we're through most of those now and the resolutions have been good. The team on site, led by Sylvain Collard and his team, have been probably the best I've, I've seen in regards to problem solving and, and, and putting putting the energy where it needs to be. And, and, you know, I think people look at the results in January and we talk to people and they, they see 11 or 12,000 tonnes and they ask us where we need to be and we'll say, look, 18 or 19,000 tonnes per month. And it's the way we get to that number and, and we ratchet the project up and we press and you know pressure test all of our systems and, and we're at that point now so I'm very we couldn't be happier to be so honest. So you are at that number? Well we'll have it out of the quarterlies but the ramp up is in a trajectory that takes us to that number yeah so uh, and uh, just some of the challenges that you were facing that you've overcome? Yeah I, I look I think probably it's been well I've been quite open with the ramp up uh, and the challenge we've had to keep our investors and, and stakeholders abreast of what we are doing and it is, a, it is a restart of an operation, so we're dealing with a lot of uh, infrastructure that's in place and we've had to work around that. And that gives us limitations in regards to redundancy of the flow sheet and the process. And particularly when you look at utilisation rates and availability rates, we've split the plant in half for assessment purposes. So everything post the crushing and grinding circuits are really our process circuits and they've outperformed from, from very early in the piece and that, that's been pleasing because that's generally one of the difficult parts to get right, like our, our reagent uses, our frothing, our recovery, uh, our limbs and whims and everything we do to reduce our deleterious elements in the, in the cargoes have worked really well. I've been quite pleased with those. What we have is a lot of intensity and the capital's gone into the front end of the crushing and grinding circuits and we're operating NAL at, at levels that hasn't operated before. So uh, we're targeting you know, throughput of 175 tonnes per hour and that takes us to where we need to be. So um, we've, we've installed the crushed door dome now, which is in use, which came online in, in early May. And we've got the process refeed system, which gives us the redundancy around any primary crusher issues. Uh, our ore sorters are working reasonably well. We're doing a pre-sort on the ROM pad to make sure uh, the philosophy is quite simple. We don't want any material into the plant to try and then take it out. We just don't have it going in the first place. So um, we've changed the way we operate in the mine. We've had some challenging mining conditions because we are working in some old underground stopes. So we're backfilling and mining through those. So it hasn't been an easy one, but I think once we move through those processes, then I think we'll, it gives us a really good shot to improving on what we expect. And uh, James, in terms of uh, envisaged grade and, and what you're achieving on the material? Consistently, we've reported it's in line with our report. So we're around 5.4, 5.5 lithium oxide percentage. Um, iron, we were a medium grade product, about 1.5% Fe203. Mica's not an issue. Uh, moisture running at about about 6 to 7% for an all fines product. So that, it, it's pretty good and it's, it's consistent across the board. And uh, is there sort of benefits on the cost side per tonne as you ramp? Yeah, look, uh, obviously the, the, um, the lowest hanging fruit is to get more tonnes and divide our fixed costs by more tonnes and that's what we want to deliver this quarter. Uh, from the other perspective, we've had, uh, when, we, when we purchased NAL in 2021, we've gone through an approvals process which has required us to, to re-permit, look at the water management plan, uh, have, have a bit of equilibrium in the way the pit looks. We've had new discoveries, as you've seen, we've released uh, quite recently. So the mine plan's changed. We've had to have additional costs to establish the mine 
We've had a bit of overhaul because we've got to uh, utilise a, a, a waste facility which is further away. Uh, all that starts to peel back um, as we move through the cycle and we get back into the, the heart of where we are. So, you know, essentially the recoveries, you know, we've, we've reported at the end of the first quarter we're above design. So we've maintained that momentum and recovery, which is always difficult. Uh, it's just managing now, um, reducing our operational costs by, by further tonnes and a few more efficiencies. And then uh, if we move on to uh, exploration, you've had some great intercepts that look better than the original pit. Yeah, and I think and, and it's, a, it's a good point, Ronnie, because we've, we've, we've invested in both uh, North American Lithium and, and uh, our other Tier 1 project in Mobland. And exploring both of those and these were this was exploration drilling not so much mine extension drilling but to uh, i know when silva and i were up there in probably may 2023 i think probably looking at where we could move and and what the potential was at nal and we've tested areas that haven't been tested before and i think it's the simplistic way to probably appreciate what we had we had a data set that hadn't had a lot of for uh, revisions since earlier the last decade um, due to restraints and the markets we operated in. So uh, we've had one intersection which is 60 metres at 1.6% true thickness. Uh, don't get me wrong on the numbers but we reported one I think a week ago and it was about another um, uh, 50 odd, 55 metres at 1.5%. So these are globally significant intercepts and it's really opening up the optionality I think as we think of the future for North American lithium. Okay, that's great. And just lastly, um, what are you hoping to take away from the conference the rest of your time here? Well, I think one of the things that it offers, uh, it, it gives us an opportunity to, to, um, to interact with our peers. And that's been important. A lot of us have been in this industry for a long time. And a lot of us are in different roles than we were at a long time ago. And it gives us an opportunity where everyone's in the same vicinity that we'd normally take a lot of time to get to that. Uh, I think that the, the way that the conference has evolved a little bit more from a resources showcasing perspective uh, to more a lot of the service providers and innovation perspective. So there's a lot of ability to interact with both types of groups. And then to top that off, you've got uh, a significant investor base here. So a lot of the funds, the fund managers are here. A lot of the banking institutions are here and people we've known over the years in funding these projects and it's it's a great opportunity to, to you know in a location that facilitates itself uh, easy to get to uh, good size and I mean we could probably do without the 44 degree heat but uh, in the end um, it, it just gives us that opportunity to, to interact quite simply and regularly great thanks very much for joining thanks Rodney thanks for having me